Thank you, Chairman Jordan and Ranking Member Plaskett for uh, this opportunity to appear. I thank you for inviting me to come here. And what I'm about to tell you sounds like it's out of some fiction spy thriller, but it actually happened, and it happened in our own government. Congressional oversight is a constitutional demand. We dedicate our careers to it. I have, at least. And during the course of my service, I've ran countless investigations. In the past few years, I've never seen so much effort from the FBI, the partisan media, and some of my Democrat colleagues to interfere with and undermine very legitimate congressional inquiries. It's because of a triad of disinformation and outright falsehoods. As one example, look at Crossfire Hurricane. Bit by bit, piece by piece, it's been deconstructed and shown to be politically motivated investigation, which it was. We all know now that it was the Democratic National Committee, along with the Clinton campaign, who colluded with the Russians. They used a former Russian spy, Fusion GPS, and law firm to create a fake dossier and then tried to cover it up. Now, the most recent example of this triad at work are efforts against my and Senator Johnson's ongoing Biden family investigation. That investigation started on August 14th, 2019, when I was chairman of the Senate Finance Committee with a letter that I wrote to the Treasury Department. My letter was about a questionable financial transaction subject to the Committee on Foreign Investment that related to a matter involving the Biden family. As our investigation continued and advanced, Democratic leadership and partisan media began their attack on our investigation. This is where that spy thriller starts to heat up. On July 13th, 2020, then Majority, Minority Leader Schumer, Senator Warner, then Speaker Pelosi, and then Chairman Schiff sent a letter with a classified attachment to the FBI. That letter expressed a purported belief that Congress was the subject of a foreign disinformation campaign. The letter was targeted at the Johnson-Grassley investigation. However, the classified attachment included unclassified element that attempted and failed to tie our work to a Russian agent named Andrei Derkash. Unsurprisingly, those unclassified elements were leaked to the press to support a false campaign accusing Senator Johnson of me of relying on material from a Russian agent and thus advancing Russian disinformation. Of course, it was pure nonsense that the irresponsible media portrayed this all as the truth. Guess what then? Chairman Schiff claimed without any evidence whatsoever that our oversight work was rooted in Russian disinformation. Of course, you know, he conveniently left out that our oversight work was actually rooted in official U.S. government and Obama administration records. Then, guess what? Senator Blumenthal also wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post accusing our investigation of, quote, perpetuating Russian disinformation in the U.S. Senate, end of quote. And then, guess what? Minority Leader Schumer and then Ranking Member Wyden tried to offer a resolution in the Senate disparaging our Biden investigation. They, in a sense, were basically calling us Russian stooges. Pretty simple. That violated Senate rules in their efforts and, of course, were appropriately shut down. On July the 16th, 2020, 
mere days after the July 13th letter. Then ranking member, members Wyden and Peters, wrote a letter to me and Senator Johnson asking for a briefing from the FBI's Foreign Influence Task Force. Our staff and the ranking member staff had already, now remember, we had already received a briefing March of 2020 that put the issue to rest. So why another briefing? The point being, there was no real purpose for another briefing, let alone a member level briefing, other than to further undermine our investigation. Some of our Democratic colleagues weren't interested in anything but using the briefing to try and destroy our investigation. But at these, at these Democrats' insistence, the FBI caved. In August 2020, Senator Johnson and I had that infamous briefing from the FBI that was needless. And then, as we had feared, the contents of that briefing were later leaked to the Washington Post, even though the FBI had promised us confidentiality. That leak outrageously and inaccurately connected that FBI briefing to our investigation in another effort to falsely label our good government oversight work as Russian disinformation. Now, the Wall Street Journal editorial board was on top of it because that board did the right thing and wrote a piece about the briefing titled, quote, the FBI's dubious briefing. Did the Bureau set up two GOP senators at the behest of Democrats, end of quote. So, simply put, the briefing was unnecessary and completely irrelevant to the substance of our investigation. It was only done because the Democrats wanted to do so they could try and smear us. And the FBI wrongly, the FBI wrongly did their bidding. To this very day, Director Ray refuses to provide Senator Johnson and me as constitutional officers records relating to that briefing, including the alleged intelligence basis for it. Director Ray has consistently failed to perform duties required of his position. Now, another example of this Democratic disinformation campaign involved a George Kent, former State Department Deputy Assistant General. Senator Johnson and I ran a transcribed interview with George Kent. Before the interview, Democrats acquired material from that Russian agent, the same one that I mentioned earlier. At the interview, Democrats, not Republicans, Democrats asked Mr. Kent about the same material. Mr. Kent said it was disinformation. Now think about that. After all the spears the Democrats were throwing at the two of us, in the end, it was the Democrats who introduced Russian disinformation from a Russian agent into the investigative record as an exhibit. A foreign agent whom our own intelligence committee warned was actively seeking to influence U.S. politics. Not me or Senator Johnson, not our staff. It was the Democrats who inserted disinformation from the Russians into our official record. The partisan media and Democrat leadership ought to be ashamed of themselves for fake information if they spread, uh, that they spread about our investigation. So in the end, they all failed to stop Senator Johnson and me. On August 23rd, 2020, Senator Johnson and I released our first Biden investigation report. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk in this town about Treasury records, and you ought to pursue them. In that 2020 report, we made public the contents of many Treasury records. 
But we didn't stop there. We issued another report, November 18, 2020. Our report exposed extensive financial relationships between Hunter and James Biden and Chinese nationals connected to the communist regime. More precisely, uh, Chinese nationals connected to the Chinese government, military, and intelligence services. With the new Congress, of course, Senator Johnson and I transitioned to be ranking members. We hadn't forgot about what uh, the triad of partisan media, FBI, and Democrats, and leadership did to us. So we don't stop. We did what any congressional investigator uh, worth their salt would do. We gathered even more records to prove them all wrong. We acquired authentic bank records that substantiated findings of our previous two reports. They financially linked Hunter Biden and James Biden to entities and individuals connected with the communist Chinese regime. We also acquired business records with Hunter and James Biden's signatures alongside those same Chinese nationals. How were they supposed to be paid? According to bank records, there were wires from companies linked to the communist regime. In three floor speeches, we made those bank records public and asked this question to our partisan detractors, the same ones that I mentioned throughout my remarks and maybe a lot of others. Are these official bank records Russian disinformation? We also shared hundreds of pages of bank records with U.S. Attorney Weiss. He failed to respond. Now, as our investigation continued, whistleblowers approached my office with allegations that the FBI created an assessment in August 2020, the same month that the FBI briefed me and Senator Johnson. According to these whistleblowers, that assessment was used by FBI headquarters to improperly discredit negative Hunter Biden information as, you might expect, disinformation. As a result, this scheme allegedly caused investigative activity to entirely cease. It's been further alleged to me that in September 2020, the same month Senator Johnson and I released our first report, those FBI headquarters personnel began placing their analysis of the credibility of reporting related to the Biden family in what I've been told is a restricted access sub-file. Further allegations to my office involved FBI personnel at the Washington field office who improperly ordered information to be closed by the FBI related to Hunter Biden's potential criminal conduct in October 2020, just before the election, even though it was verified or it was verifiable. Other whistleblower disclosures to my office make clear that the FBI has within its uh, possession very significant, impactful, and voluminous evidence with respect to potential criminal conduct by Hunter and James Biden. These disclosures also allege that Joe Biden was aware of Hunter Biden's business arrangements and may have been involved in some of them. We still aren't sure what's been done with this information. The FBI's track record doesn't create much faith that the information is going to be followed up on. It's clear to me that the Justice Department and the FBI are suffering from a political infection that, if it's not defeated, will cause the American people no longer to trust these storied institutions. It will also threaten the American way of life. Unfortunately, what you've heard from me, this story of government abuse and political treachery is scarier than fiction. It really happened. But Mr. Chairman, your committee here, so assembled, has an opportunity to help us write the last chapter in this real life drama. You must relentlessly pursue the facts and the evidence. Senator Johnson and I 
will do the same and willing to work with you. Thank you.